We have some big time weather coming in and I'm going to go over everything that will be coming in the next week. Starting off here at the day two severe weather outlook. So this is for tomorrow, which is Thursday. Now this risk is actually for Thursday night. This will not be a daytime hour event. This will definitely be during the night. But as you can see, we have a 5% tornado risk for portions of Louisiana, Texas, a little bit of Oklahoma, Arkansas, and Mississippi. But the main threat, this will be the winds as we have a 15% wind risk for all those areas as well. There's also a small chance of some big hail whenever you go to Texas, Louisiana, Arkansas, and Oklahoma. But as said by the National Weather Service, strong wind gusts and some tornadoes are the primary threats of this event on Thursday night. Now, if we look at what the jet stream will be looking like uh, whenever these storms come through, as you can see, this is what it looks like right now. That system just came through on Tuesday, bringing a lot of flooding and uh, some winds and also some tornadoes to the south. But as you can see here, we have another dip in the jet stream coming, and this one will be different. So uh, normally what we see is we see a huge curve down here in the winter times, like that normally, normally negatively tilted like that. And you get a huge line of storms. So you get your huge line of storms right here that brings wind and then also some snow on the back end up here. And then you have your severe weather down here normally. But instead, this storm will take more of a spring look to it. If we, if we play this through right here, this is the 12th right here in the morning hours. And as you can see, once that interacts with the Gulf of Mexico, it actually instead kind of widens out, which could be a big supercell maker but there could not be supercells with this as we might not have the energy as i'll explain later but as you can see if this was in spring this would probably be a moderate or a high risk day uh so this is a big system but since this is in the winter it will not be as big as it would be if it was in the spring so let's look at this on a more normal map like a radar map so we're still looking at our day two risk which is centered around right over here so this is where you're looking for uh that's where our risk is for thursday night so if we play this simulated radar right over here from the h triple r model so this is tomorrow over here the 11th and as you can see we are hitting around one o'clock now and there is nothing really going on until you enter around 8 p.m or around 7 p.m actually for the uh central time uh as you can see we get some moisture starting and then bam right about there you get some cells popping up right over here in Oklahoma and Arkansas. So right over here, this is very, very, this is about midnight time. Uh, so this is very late, but you get these popping up and they will basically just explode. This is probably where your primary tornado threat will be with this is whenever you get these. Uh, maybe some of these could inhibit a tornado inside of them. So Arkansas, I would be on big alert for Thursday night. But as we continue this, you can see this sort of tries to form into a line which it looks like it will, so that will cause some gusty winds and maybe some hail as well with that, with the uh, cells coming for the line. And then you have this line forming, so there is a line right here that will form, but it will fizzle out later. So you still have these preceding uh, little cells that could have some hail, there also could be some small hail on this line, but the main thing with the line it will be gusty winds. As you can see, those cells continue to proceed, and then as we get into the very early morning hours, of Friday, you can see this is still going on, causing a lot of impacts for Louisiana and Arkansas, and it's starting to move into Mississippi. This is our CAPE. So CAPE is basically the energy available for the storms. With our last system, we had quite a lot of energy down in the near the Gulf of Mexico, which is why we got a lot of tornadoes at that event. But the further north you went, the uh, less severe of the storms that we had, uh, tornado-wise, and that was because of the lack of CAPE. So if you look at the CAPE with this system, it is January. So it does make sense why we do not see much cape. But as we roll through, you can see there's a bit of cape starting to come up from the Gulf of Mexico around right before these storms pop up. And this is about whenever the storms pop up. So bam, right there. As you can see, there's an explosion of energy. And the storm will just eat up the energy as it will go through. So it's not quite a lot of energy, but it is, it is quite a lot for January, to be honest. This is where our higher risk is. So this is for the day three outlook. So we don't know exactly what our risks are yet. We will know that tomorrow. Uh, but we do know this will definitely cause damaging winds and some tornadoes. If we look at the wording by the uh, Storm Prediction Center, as you can see, uh, the main concern currently and why we have that level three risk is because there could be some discrete supercell development uh, above this cold front that won't really have much gusty winds associated with the cold front. It will mainly be a cell, cell issue with this uh, 
with this event that we have. That would be your risk for strong tornadoes. But otherwise, there would be small organized clusters of storms that could have very strong winds and possibly a weak tornado or two. So looking at one of our models, this is the HRW model. So this is one of the only high resolution models that reaches that far. But anyways, this model is on the higher end of things. So let's look at it. So there's yourselves popping up in Arkansas. And as we enter here, this is the very early morning hours. So as you can see in Mississippi, you are going to start getting some storms. And some of those could turn severe relatively quick as we reach sunlight hours. So as you can see, you still have that line of storms right there. And then your supercells, possible supercells in front of it. But then that line, it will try to fizzle out and it might just be only a cellular event. Most models are not showing a severe line of winds with this, but mostly just a cellular event. And then we have this warm air rising right over here at the perfect time as this is the same time that the storms are coming. So we could have some early bird storms in South Carolina, but our main threat is going to be right over here in Alabama. As we reach over here, this is a classic supercell and it is showing on a forecast model. So as you can see right here, this looks just like a supercell if you know what a supercell looks like. So uh, definitely southern Alabama and uh, portions of the Florida Panhandle, you might be at the greatest risk. And then as this continues on, you can see we then uh, will continue the threat into Georgia. And then the threat looks like it will lessen as it moves into South Carolina and North Carolina near the evening hours. And then our system looks like it will be out of here and will be done with it. So if you look at the surface base cape real quick in this, uh, as you can see right over here, that's our energy that is rushing up into the storm system on Thursday night. And then as we get into Friday morning, we have a, quite a lot of capable energy right over here in Alabama. So if we look right over here at a sounding in Alabama, this is basically what's going to go on. Our possible hazard type is tornado. It's a pretty decent hodograph that we're looking at. So the shear, it's obviously not going to be as crazy as, as it was with the last system. But we still will have quite a lot of shear with this. Um, it looks like we have, we'll have about the same amount of energy as we did with the last system, which wasn't all too much. So it looks like we have we will have sufficient energy in around Georgia and Alabama, but not really in the Carolinas, which is why I think the severe threat will be less in the Carolinas. So enough with severe weather. Let's see who's going to get snow from this. So if we look at this, we do have a little bit of a snow system moving through Wisconsin, Michigan, places where you normally see snow. And then here is our system right over here on the 12th. So as you can see, it looks like an Iowa, Minnesota, Wisconsin snowbringer. Also Michigan, portions of New York, and up there in the Northeast, areas where you normally see snow basically every single storm. So not that big of a snowmaker with this storm. Uh, but if we do look at the temperature, uh, so this is the temperature of the air. Uh, so it's been relatively warm here in the southeast if you do live here and it's been relatively cold in the Midwest So we keep on having a whole bunch of polar blasts that try to go past the Rocky Mountains or the Appalachian Mountains Sorry uh, right there, but they haven't really been able to until we reach the 18th as you can see right here on the 17th This cold air is able to make it all the way down into the Gulf of Mexico You'll be seeing freezing temperatures. So that's pretty crazy. This could have a um frost advisory or even a freeze warning for portions of Florida as this cold air is going to move into Florida a little bit later around the 21st. That will move all the way down into Orlando. But that is really all so I hope you guys enjoyed and I might go chasing the storm on Friday depending on how high the risk is but that is really all so I'll see you guys in the next storm.